Welcome to the Writer's Edge Podcast, a platform to share conversations about the health and wellness of horse and rider. I'm your host, Farley Schweigert. Hey y'all, it's Farley with the Writer's Edge Podcast, and today I want to talk about stall rest. So I want to talk about stall rest today and what it means and how you can help in this very trying time. Um, Stall rest is not meant to be a timeout from our veterinarians. (laughs) Although, I don't know, my vet may be putting me in the crazy house because as I'm talking about this podcast today, Charlie is on three weeks of stall rest, and I have another horse that by the end of the week will be on two weeks of stall rest. And so as I left the vet clinic this past weekend, and I saw all this stall rest coming, oh, I was sad and a little worried about my sanity, but... I think that's how we leave our vet clinics a lot of times. <laughs> oh, so maybe this mo- podcast is more a therapy session for me to get ready for the next three weeks, or maybe, um, but maybe it'll be beneficial for you too. And maybe you'll get some tidbits to help the next time you have to deal with stall rest. So why do we do stall rest? Well, we do stall rest to restrict movement of our horses because I can't go up to Chuck and say, okay, Chuck, Chuckles, Charlie, dearest, I need you to not move your right front leg as much and take it easy and shift your weight off of it and let it rest and let it heal. As much as I would like to be able to go talk to Chuck like this, I can't. So, with an injury, with a post-op recovery, sometimes stall rest is required, and it's really to give that structure some time off, some uh, not hitting the extremes. Now, they're still going to move around in their stall um, and do other antics as my other horse that will be on stall rest, his name is Red. And uh, I'm actually more worried about him than I am Charlie, but that's a different story. Um, just because he is grouchier at feed time in his stall than um, some of the other horses. So um, so it's just it's just restriction. Because in people, in people, we can put people in casts. We can put people in walking boots. We can put them on crutches, in a wheelchair, on a cane, um, on a walker. We have different devices to help limit movement or limit weight bearing through a limb. And we can't do that with horses. Uh, we, we can't, like I said, we can't, I can't walk up to Charlie and say, okay, Charles, for six weeks, you're going to do, we're going to do your normal routine, but at half speed and half weight bearing and whatever, whatever, whatever. So, you know, it's a, it's a pretty easy therapy concept, but I think we're going to talk about some maybe tricks that'll help some people with stall rest that I've learned from other experiences. So with Charlie, and and this depends on the situation too, Charlie's stall rest has been reduced to basically the size of three big stalls. The way Charlie's living arrangements are, he has a stall, and and it's a pretty standard size stall, under a shed, and he gets turned out a lot. Um, Probably... He has access to be out probably at least 12 to 14, 16 hours a day. He, he only gets locked up when everybody else gets out during the day because he doesn't play nice with others. Um, so what I did when I got home this weekend is I opened up that other stall 
under the shed by Charlie's stall. And, and so essentially he has three stalls that he can roam around in. And he's definitely restricted to what he was doing as he was leaping and bounding and running like a banshee and doing all sorts of crazy cold weather things um, in and around all the things. So he's, he's pretty limited there, but he still has um, all of his antics that he can do. Charlie, throughout the day, whether he's on stall rest or not, he likes to throw his feed pan out of his hay bin and turn his hay bin over and flip it back over. And now he can move in another hay bin. And so he's got a couple of things to, to keep him satisfied, hopefully. But that's still, it's restricted his movement enough and I really like for where Charlie is in his rehab, it's restricted it, but still allowing some movement. So I really think we're capturing the the best of, of all worlds with that. And as I've had to deal with stall rest post-operatively before, um, one tip I'll give you is if you can set up a stall outside, do it. There's nothing wrong with having your horse at some stall rest, walk from their stall to a safe stall outside, especially if that's a routine. They're used to getting out during the day and have a turnout time. And as long as they're, you know, out to where they can kind of see their buddies as normal, that's a, a real good way to break up that routine for them and um, or the monotony, rather, of just being in their stall and kind of keep them on their same routine. It's different, but it's very similar. That worked for my horse. She uh, she had degloved her hind leg, and we had to lay her down to sew her up. And it was a it was a very long rehab process, and that worked really well for her. Um, because I think people get afraid of well, if, I, if they're on stall rest, they're not supposed to move. Well, that's not feasible either. And so, just walking them from one stall to the other stall is not too much movement. It's not going to uh, degrade the healing process for what's going on. And uh, mental health when you're on stall rest for both horse and owner, but particularly horse in this situation, is very important um, to keep them compliant with stall rest. Because if they get too wackadoodle crazy, then they're going to start kicking at walls and rearing and, and bucking and, and doing and adding pressure to structures that we're trying to get to heal and calm down and, and all of that. So if that is something that you can set up, that is well within stall rest limits. Another thing to remember when you have horses on stall rest is bedding making sure they have clean bedding, a lot of bedding, fresh bedding. Uh, we've talked about this on previous podcasts, but we'll talk about it again. Having a lot of bedding in there, research has shown that horses will be more apt to lay down if they have deep bedding. And this helps promote healing because horses are natural prey animals and can function with very little sleep and very little deep sleep. So if you are encouraging them to lay down, they're going to sleep more. And if you're sleeping more, you're healing more. If you're uh, able to just lay down and rest, uh, Charlie, Charlie likes a midday nap. And uh, whether whether he's on stall rest or not, he, he likes having a midday nap and he'll, he'll stretch all the way out and conk out and snore. And it's quite ridiculous, but, um, so something to think about, especially, and it may be different from how you normally keep your horse. And it may be different, um, from the type of bedding you use in the rest of your barn. You may need to change that up for a horse that's on stall rest, depending upon where you live and, and the situation you have going. But think about that. You know, bedding is a cost and um, for, for all horse owners, but think about the cost reward and don't skimp on bedding, on shavings when a horse is on stall rest. 
for keeping the stall dry and keeping allowing whatever bandages if you have any to you know stay clean and dry as possible but really to let, uh, encourage a horse to lay down and rest and sleep and chill another another um, helpful tip on stall rest is calming supplements um, you can talk with your vet there are a lot of medications including Prozac and other things that vets don't have a problem with prescribing for the amount of time that your horse is going to be on stall rest, this, that, and the other. So make sure you have a conversation with your veterinarian about your horse's personality and things you anticipate um, while on stall rest. Don't just get the stall rest instructions and be like, oh gosh, I hope this works out. No, talk to them about things that you are anticipating and maybe... Um, medications that can help head that off. <laughs> so, um, so whether it is a medication prescribed by your veterinarian or even a calming supplement, um, a, a feed through calming supplement, there's a lot of different companies that make good supplements. For, for me on the calming aspect, I have used Oxygen's Relax for several different situations and um, it is on its way here for my new round of stall rest. Um, and it's been a very good uh, supplement for me. There is um, Smart Pack makes a calming supplement. A lot of the supplement companies make a calming supplement, and I've heard good things about a lot of them. That's just what I've had as, as personal experience that um, has really impressed me and, and worked for what I needed it to work for. So if you are in a period of stall rest like me, um, it's okay. We can be here together. Um, it is uh, um, just a period of, you know, letting the healing, let, letting the body heal. Because a lot of times in the healing process, we've got to jump start it we've got to promote it we've got to let it kind of figure things out and then we can attack it with our um, treatment tools with our exercise protocols with our exercise program with reintroducing things um, changing up leg gear different different things to help after the stall rest period but it's a it's a way it's, it's needed for a lot of injuries, frankly. And I believe that making sure you have good bedding, making sure that, um, you have it set up, you know, if you can set it up to where it's a bigger stall than what they're used to, that might be helpful. If you have a stall inside and outside, you know, that might help break up their routine. It was very helpful for my mare that I rehabbed and, uh, you know, just making sure um, they are as mentally sound during stall rest as possible. But please be careful if you are on extended stall rest um, when you get to hand walking or um, whatever the next step out of stall rest is. You know, make sure that you're being safe and uh, um even the best horses sometimes have uh, end up with poor actions, even if they have the best intentions um, of and it being a safety hazard. So if you're hand walking, if you are, you know, walking from the inside stall to the outside stall, um, make sure, you know, they are having to observe their manners. As uh, my friend tells me, as she's prepping me for my stall rest days. She's like, Okay, when you get there to do something with Charlie, you've got to drain everything out and make sure you are, uh, you know, focused on the task at hand, focused on um, what Charlie needs and that you're not bringing a lot of extra emotion into that. So other, other things to think about from a safety aspect as well, because these are, our horses are made to not be in a stall at all at any time and thanks sure not um, for extended periods of time so 
hopefully that helps and maybe gives you some hope or maybe just gives you some, yay, somebody's in the trenches with me. A lot of this podcast comes from real life experience. (laughs) Not only do I rehab other people's horses, I rehab my own. Um, So hopefully this helps at least um, give you some, okay, somebody's there with me. Um, I'm not alone. No, you're not alone if you're on stall rest right now. And the good thing about being on stall rest at this time of the year, it's yucky most places. So by the time the temperature is higher and the day, days are getting longer, hallelujah. But the days are, are really kind of where we want them to be and getting super, super longer that um, we'll be to the next phase. We'll be out of the stall rest phase and we'll be to the next phase, no matter what that is, whether that is hand walking for you or, um, you know, a light riding program or whatever that looks like. So there is hope. Spring's coming, and uh, we'll we'll keep trucking along. I'll give you updates on Charlie and Red as uh, we move forward. And so, um, as always, thank you for listening to the podcast. Good luck with your stall rest. Um, you might need some calming supplement too, but we can talk about your calming supplement on another day. <laughs> So good luck. And as always, I'll see you down the road. Thank you for listening to Rider's Edge podcast. For show notes and other thoughts, head over to ridersedgetherapy.com. If you would like to stay connected and continue the conversation, head over to my free Facebook group, Rider's Edge Health and Wellness for Horse and Rider. Thanks for continuing the conversation, and as always, I will see you down.